All right, today we are here with Mana Newman out of Trickster, uh, CTA Association. I have to say, I am super stoked for this interview. You are my favorite athlete in Hawaii right now, Jiu-Jitsu athlete. I love watching you. Everything about you is like she's a superstar in the making. Um, so you just, I just want to say thank you for coming down and spending some time with us today. Thank you for asking. I really, I'm not going to lie, I'm not used to this, but I was looking forward to it as well. Okay, good, good. Um, we start the interviews off pretty much the same way, and it's always tell me how you got to jiu-jitsu and tell me about your journey uh, to where you're at today. So I actually, I started at United MMA at first. Okay. And that was for about like maybe a year and a half or so. Super strong team. Yeah. There's some killers there. And then I think after a while, the head coach, um, Coach Ken, ended up closing down because he had to get surgery for the back of his neck, I believe. Okay. And when they closed down, they actually recommended us to Mad Tiger. Okay. And they were like right up the road from the old gym of United. Yep. So we ended up going over there and I started first. I kind of like joined in, tried like the kids class and saw how it was and I loved it right what, away. What year was this? I think it was maybe 2014, Okay. 2016, within like that time frame. I was about 11 okay. when I started and after I like got to meet a lot of the kids especially I loved it and I instantly stuck with it and I was able to get my family into it as well my dad joined in after my sisters and then now I actually have my whole family training with me all black belts three black belts three including black belts. myself okay me my dad and my older sister okay she trains at Mad Tiger still with Coach Eric and Coach Trav. And then me and my dad are at Trickster with Professor Jeremy. My mom is a purple belt right now. She okay. just got it last year, actually. Congratulations to mom. Thank you. And then my little sister is a blue belt and my little brother is a gray and white belt. So I'm maybe have to interview them next when they're, <laughs> when they're the next up and coming. So yeah. Uh, all right, cool, yeah. The whole family's in. Might as well. Right, cool. Okay. so. You're at Mad Tiger and you said you're, you're currently at Trickster. Uh, mm. How did that progression go? What, what got you over to Trickster? So I learned like, I definitely learned a lot from Coach Eric. He was the one that got me into it. He was able to teach me a lot of the basics and stuff. But after a while, I actually learned a lot more from Professor Jeremy. He was able to give like that one-on-one -on -one lessons that you'd want right the attention more so where you get to actually understand a lot more of the concepts of jiu-jitsu of the technique you're doing and i think just the way he did it because of how like free-spirited he is me and like a lot of the other girls and kids ended up kind of following his way and he was at mad tiger at this time yeah okay. he started kind of teaching more of like the kids the teens classes and then even the adult classes after a while okay and I think just kind of seeing how a lot of the coaches were at that time got me into it to where I was like, okay, I think I could see myself doing something like this and enjoying it and loving it the way they do. And so I think after a while, I kind of adapted more to his game okay. and started making it my own. And then once he, well, once Matt Tiger closed for their old gym, that was the one in Milani. Yeah. Okay. They ended up opening up one in Wahiwa. And we were still like training with them for a bit. But I think after a while for myself especially, I wasn't learning as much as I wanted to from Coach Eric. Okay. I still got to learn from like Coach Trav, his pressure, everything, Professor Jeremy Nita and like how his game is. But then there was just a lot more politics and kind of bad feelings after a while that happens sometimes yeah it, it happens sometimes i mean there's no bad feelings now okay. good good we're like it we're should, all good. shouldn't be yeah. yeah and i will never regret being at mad tiger that's where i started that's so where jeremy opened trickster in 2021 2022 something like that i think 21 21 you did you go initially or you, did you stay with mad tiger i um, went initially initially okay only because i was already kind of training with them in 
um, on Garage Adam's Garage in okay. Miley. Okay, I, I, I remember seeing pictures of that. Yeah. Like, it was like a little lean-to. They had some, mm -hmm. some tarps up and everything. We had like the mats down. We would hike the pillbox first, <laughs> and then we'd go and do like some striking after to oh warm up, and then we'd all roll and like beat each other up after that. <laughs> and it was super fun. I would love to talk to Jeremy and Roger about that transition where we're like, hey, we're just gonna sit at our house. Hey, people are coming over. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're gonna open up this gym in Kapolei, which we were talking about earlier, but might be one of. It for sure one of the top gyms, but might be the top gym right now for as far as attendance and people competing and, yeah. and, and classes. I heard you guys were even expanding and trying to get a bigger place. They did. We are. Okay. We're trying to see like, I think from what they were saying is they're looking within still the Campbell area if they can. Okay. But anywhere that has a bigger space, but that we can have at least maybe the fundamentals class on one side and then the advanced classes on the other side so two sections yeah that, that would be good that would help especially time the time spot so limited in that premium uh premium time spot yeah really, really is valuable especially to like split up our classes because our kids class alone we have about like 70 or so kids wow. almost 80 kids in one class that's a lot and these are like our monday wednesday classes that's kind of an art to balance uh just just the control of the kids class just to give them enough space where they're not all hitting each other and beating each other up at the same time. Right, right. Oh, man, that's that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, good. I hope you guys expand and, and continue to grow the sport of jiu-jitsu in too. Hawaii. Um, you are relatively new as a black belt. You finished your first season up. Um, can you tell me about that transition? Because you compete a lot. You're always on the scene locally. Uh, you're, you're going to the mainland to fight. Mm -hmm. From the colored belts to black belt, you didn't get a break. I mean, you fought the 2023 Gi champion and the 2023 No Gi champion. <laughs> you fought some complete legends. You had tough matches. Like, you put on the belt and they're like, here's some fire. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that? I was ready for it, honestly. Like, I looked forward to it. Getting my black belt. I never expected when I would get it. It was never something a part of my plan. Like, I've always wanted to get my black belt but I never had it as I required it in order for me to continue my jiu-jitsu journey. It was just something that once I did get it, I always watched so much of the black belt female athletes competing. Jessica Khan, Maisa Bastos, Tammy Usamechi. Watching all of those females compete, especially within my weight, yep. I couldn't wait for the day where I could actually get to go against them. And then I finally did. <laughs> Have you fought Mysa too? I haven't yet. Okay. I was supposed to last year, but I got beat by the weight scale instead. <laughs> by like a pound. Don't let that happen. No. Don't let that happen. <laughs> I learned my lesson. That was a one and done. Okay, good, good. But like getting to go against Jessica and even, I felt like that was where I put myself on that pedestal. I was like, okay, I almost beat one of the world champs right there. Was she already the world champ at that point, or was, was she was? She was okay. She uh, that was a oh. very competitive match. No, it was actually right after right I had after? gone against her. She won the world champ. Okay, okay, okay. This was uh, like Santa Cruz or something. Yeah, Santa Cruz. Okay, that was a very close match. Man, how much time was left on that clock? I think maybe like less than a minute left. Wow, definitely less than a minute. Because she had shot for the armbar as I was coming up, and I left my arm out trying to reach in. And then she shot for it and I kept rolling through, but I didn't realize I could have kept rolling out of bounds and they would have at least reset us. And so I was take, up take by points. Point, take the point penalty, yeah. yeah. Wow. I was up by points already, so I was like, frick. <laughs> I'm um, so close. The, the the margin of error, the higher the, the higher the level gets. Yeah. I mean you really have to know the intricacies, the, the details, the rules, like the advantages, what's gonna win you the ref mm -hmm. decision sometimes, even though we don't wanna win that way, yeah. sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So I mean you take took something very valuable away from that. Mm -hmm. I didn't like I'm definitely gonna keep competing no matter what happens. I wanna look for that championship title. But I definitely will take whatever lessons I can get as I go. I just knew that when I went with Tammy, I had um, I registered for Nogi Worlds, and I was like, okay, let's see who's in my bracket. I saw like 
Misa was in my bracket at first. Okay. And then she ended up going to Rooster instead. Yep, yep, I remember that. And I had like a few females in my division at first. And then I went to go and look back again. And someone texted me, they're like, do you see who you have in your division? I was like, no, why? They were like, yeah, Tammy moves to Mechie. I was like, no, you're lying. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. And I looked at it, I was like, she is. I don't she's know if a, I should pull out right now. She's a superhero. <laughs> she I is. Mean, she has like a real job. She's not like working some job. She has a real job. She has she's a, a lawyer. Yeah. And then she's like, I'm just going to go win a world championship. Yeah. yeah. And I heard she wasn't even compete or training as much for that. Yeah, she's amazing. And she took the title. I was like, I don't feel as bad about myself now. <laughs> I didn't like, I think the biggest thing I didn't want was to lose by like 20 something to zero. Okay, okay. So I was like, that was one accomplishment right there. <laughs> I went against a world champ and I didn't lose like 20 something to zero. I technically didn't tap to her. Was, it was, was that the official? The end. Was that the official? Was it was points? Yeah. Because it happened right at the buzzer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. But Mikey them ended up saying I tapped to it. Oh, so there was some influence. Yeah. Uh, it, it happened. You know? I didn't mind yeah, it though. Uh, I had a cool highlight reel for her. Yeah. And it, it, it's always good to get that experience, and you know what it feels like. And, and most of us really can't say that. No. Um, I want to talk about where you're at and one of the reasons you are my favorite athlete coming out of Hawaii right now is we have older guys so like Jeremy mm -hmm. where age became a factor where him winning a black belt adult world title right because of just father time mm -hmm. the odds are, are much lower and then we have on the other scale we have these young up-and-coming teenagers or maybe they're close to your, closer to your age adults but they're not a black belt yet mm -hmm. But you're young, 22, 21? 23. 23, okay. 23, and you're a black belt. And you've already wrapped up a season and a half of competing. I mean, you're there. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think, like, do you know of any other adult black belts in your position that are from Hawaii and stayed in Hawaii? No, not really. Not, like, too much, at least that are my age and are black belts like you said i feel like they're all either just getting there or they end up moving and then they kind of pursue their career there you've made the comment to me offline about like i'm here i'm staying here um you're representing hawaii but you're not representing it and going somewhere else mm -hmm. and i think back in the days that wasn't really an option um, but where you're at now you're a professional athlete you train full-time you teach full-time jiu-jitsu is everything you do so mm -hmm. you've kind of found this perfect opportunity but i love that you're like i'm staying here what made you decide to do that because there are places still that you could go oh yeah um i've thought about it like i still have it as a not like a bucket list thing but i would like to train with aoj okay just to like get that experience of how their comp training is how their curriculum is and just like how their competitors are the way they move on the mats <laughs> yeah. i, I want to at least be able to learn from that yeah. but i knew if i went somewhere else into the mainland i wouldn't have my family i wouldn't have my team here i feel like everybody here right now is exactly where i need to be is doing where i grew up how i grew up and being able to share that with everybody here. I don't need to show myself off by going to the mainland and it sounds great to pursue my career over there, but it wouldn't be the same if I left home. Oh. Oh. I love it here. I've, I've really thought about moving, that's why. <laughs> I thought about it when I was coming out of high school. Everyone that, that was in the position thought about it and, mm -hmm. and highly considered it. Um, but it was cool to hear that you wanted to stay here. Um, you've also transitioned to coaching. Mm -hmm. You're giving back to these kids. You're, you're teaching them. You're giving them a different perspective, right? a very unique one from what we just talked about. Yeah. Um, does that play into your decision to stay here? It definitely does. I love the kids at Trickster especially. Like growing up in the jiu-jitsu community, I never had a female role model to look up to like how I can be for the kids now. I never 
it just wasn't the same and so I wanted to do for them what I never could do for myself and it's being able to teach them jujitsu in a way that I know they can understand but that they'll still enjoy the sport the way they want to because I feel like that's like a big thing too is it's not just you want to learn jujitsu you want to do self-defense and brag about to your friends hey I got like an orange belt or something <laughs> It's nice to do that, yeah, yeah. but if you don't enjoy the sport as much as you want to, it's not worth it. Eventually, you'll be able to find something else that you like and you'll kind of taper off. And that happened with like a lot of the kids I grew up with. I ended up being the last kid from my kids' <laughs> class that stuck it out and kept going. It was like a, a battle of attrition, right? We yeah. just stick around long enough and we get good. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you have a very uh, organized and deliberate way of training. Um, I think the first time I rode with you was at Trickster mm -hmm. and I remember because I spoke with Jeremy after but I was like dead set competition style and I'm bigger than you and I'm a guy and I remember like I body locked you and I was just like you see you're you're just gonna have to deal with this because mm -hmm. because I'm worried about myself and the next time I rode with you you were like nope not at all and Jeremy told me afterwards he was like she asked me and we just sat there and worked on this and so no one could body lock her ever again mm -hmm. I think that's so mature it was just like here's a problem how do I fix it and he said you put a lot of time into that so can we talk about how even though you're staying in Hawaii mm -hmm. you have a very intelligent and deliberate way of training and how that's uh, helping your progression I learn a lot from observing people I can do a lot more when I visualize things. So even if you're like explaining the process of a technique, if I can catch like the key details within that, I'll be able to visualize it and do it myself. So after a while, when I started helping Coach Jeremy teaching and helping with a lot of the classes, the way he would break down everything, I was able to memorize that and then teach it to myself. And then after a while, once I started helping, I'd be able to relay that same message, but in the way I can understand it. And after a while, the kids were able to do that too. They caught on to a lot of the technique. And I think it helped my game because I could break down a lot of the situations I would get stuck in, like how it was with you. I got super frustrated after our <laughs> role. That's why I was like, I'm sorry. there's no way this guy just He's about my size, that's why. He looks like it. But he just smashed me like nothing. And I got super frustrated and I was like, okay, Jeremy, I need you, we need to work on something right now. Right now because I'm not gonna be able to do Nogi Worlds if I cannot get through this at all. So I ended up asking him, we like worked for a while, I think after day class. Okay. And then I incorporated it in my roles. Okay. And even how you were rolling, I take, certain lessons from that and details on how you're rolling and I'll implement it the next time I roll with somebody else and then I'll be like okay I can see how this is working a lot for him and I'll adapt how I roll with everybody and I'll implement it into my own game and I kind of like form my own technique after a while with that and I'm able to teach it after a while and then it helps to just kind of get that flow that I want so. of like okay I know my game doesn't work necessarily against somebody like this, but what did he do that stopped me from making it work? And then I'll kind of go from there, build it up, try it with somebody else that's either bigger or about the same size, and then I'll continue that in my mind. I'll be like, okay, I know he got like the cross face. And even when you taught the Nogi class and you talked about the half guard stuff of the three types with the butterfly, lockdown and the knee shield ever since you said that it stuck <laughs> with me and i've been able to implement that with my half guard game teaching half guard Ooh, i'm glad you learned something i did <laughs> i don't think you realize like everybody that i train with i will learn something from you regardless of your belt it never mattered to me that's a huge statement regardless of the belt there's there's always someone out there doing something different or weird that, mm -hmm. that changes the angle um, one guy who not even jujitsu related but um, I've always kind of like how is this guy so successful is Charlie Munger mm. um, and I don't know if you know who this is but Warren Buffett uh, his business partner who passed away he had this quote he always used and it was from a European guy named Jacoby but it was invert always invert 
And when it comes to jujitsu, that's kind of how we look at things, mm -hmm. right? Like from the top and the bottom, like close guard is mount. It's just inverted. Yeah. And the, the same attacks kind of kind of apply, but there's a different challenge involved. Mm -hmm. what, the way you're talking about this is like, you're not just seeing it from Mana's perspective, you're seeing it from that big guy's perspective or that small person's perspective. And you're trying to apply it to everything. And you're not just memorizing it, but you're understanding it. And then the teaching part where you can correlate it and you can teach it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's gotta help with your progression yourself, but also for all your students. Yeah. It's like a big thing where I feel like, even when I know I can get smashed all day, I'll, I'll take the cracks any day. That's what I live for, as crazy <laughs> as it sounds. And I say this to a lot of people, you cannot be in jujitsu and have a right mind. You gotta be a little nuts at some point. Like a lot nuts, yeah. To enjoy it of getting choked, getting your legs basically broken or your arms. <laughs> but you learn a lot if you understand a lot of the concepts. Yeah. You can't just go through the technique and be like, okay, I drilled this, now I'm gonna try it in live rolls. But if you don't actually figure out why it's supposed to work or what key details you need in order for it to work, you're gonna get super frustrated and then you're gonna give up on it. Yeah, and I used to sure. do that a lot. I used to be like, okay, I, I got this, I drilled it super good, and then I'll try it in live rows and I'll get smashed. And it <laughs> wouldn't work at all. I'd be like, Jeremy, I don't think it worked. <laughs> um, I don't, and what am I doing wrong? And so after a while, I would, I like being alone. And so I'd sit in my own thoughts after I roll okay. and I'll kind of analyze how the roll went. I'll be like, okay, what worked best, what didn't? And after a while of seeing how other jujitsu competitors are, I would try to figure out, okay, what are they doing that's so different from what I'm doing? And so I started writing it down. I would write down like certain positions I get stuck in. Okay. I would write down certain subs I'd always get caught in. I'd be like, okay, why am I getting caught like this? And why am I still letting myself get caught in the same positions again and again? Right. And from there, I'd kind of intentionally put myself in it just to find a way to get out. And now even like a lot of people say it, I have a hard back take to where people can't get both of their hooks in and it's like one of their goals to get their two hooks <laughs> I in. I do remember this, yes, yeah. <laughs> but it's just because of how much I got my back, back taken from a lot of people. From smaller guys, bigger guys, bigger females, they would get my back and I'd be stuck there and I'd kind of panic. And so I had to kind of learn after a while, like, okay, you need to realize how you're getting stuck and you need to be able to put yourself in that position after a while like if I can get your back okay how are you escaping it so when you're getting my back I know what to look out for at least yeah. and I think like one of the big things that I always got told from either my dad from Jeremy from a lot of the coaches leave your emotions out of it <laughs> And a lot of people say females are very emotional and it can be true. It's one of our own secret weapons we can use, <laughs> but it's actually a big thing that messes up your jujitsu game because you let yourself get frustrated and irritated and you're like, I'm not even good enough to do this. I don't even know why I want to continue doing this, but I did it anyways. And I kept it out and then here I am today. I think you're you're calm, you're collected, you're calculated. Like I said, intelligent, deliberate training. Um, it goes a long way. And, and to hear you just explain it, how you just did. I mean, it's just like getting into your brain and kind of going to steal some of those things. Like, <laughs> we, should, we should be doing this instead. <laughs> um, shifting gears just a little bit. We're going to get off jujitsu. You do it all the time. You teach it. You're competing. You're mm -hmm. training. What are your other hobbies? Going to the beach. Okay. I am a very nature person right well we had a good backdrop for yeah. it today yeah. i'm a very nature person <laughs> i prefer to be more countryside than i would of city side so even when i was growing up i used to go fishing with my parents we'd always go to the beach i think after a while i don't have like too many hobbies right now other than jujitsu 
I'm still trying to work on balancing that part for myself of not being on the mats, but still having the mats at the same time. So I think mainly it's just going to the beach, eating food, probably sleeping. What's your favorite beach? Oh, Nanakuli Beach Park. Yeah, it's nice out there. What's your favorite food? Poke bowls. Oh, from where? Anywhere. 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 Just as long as the fish is fresh. Yes. As long as it's good, I'll get ahi limu, spicy ahi, or a California roll. I like the ahi limu. I don't, I don't like the spicy ahi. Oh, the California roll is better. It's good. It's better? Yes. I'll, I'll try it out next time. <laughs> it's not, not um, too much of a kick, that's why. Okay. Okay. It's not the spicy I don't like. I don't, I don't know. It's just, oh. It doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Anyways, um, tell us something that no one else knows about you. But like, maybe not the deepest, darkest secret, but something that doesn't really get out of the jiu-jitsu mat. Um, okay, wait, you go first while I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my secret talent is I rap. You rap? I rap. So uh, that, that's, that's my, uh, something a lot of people don't know when they find out. They're like, oh, you're actually pretty decent. Um, but I took it serious when I was younger. Um, and pursued it like as a full-time thing for a while. So wow. I, I can rap. See, but I don't even know anything that people <laughs> don't know about me. <laughs> okay, what was the fa your favorite match that you were ever in? My favorite match? Mm -hmm. That you were involved in, so you, you were actually fighting. Me and Jessica Khan. Wow. Jess is a, she's a legend. She is. I think like with that match especially, I had like a lot going on outside of jujitsu that I really had to focus on my mental game for it. Because, like I said, I, I let a lot of the outside influences get to my head to where I felt like I couldn't be confident in myself to go against her. I knew I had her in my division. I was like, please don't show up. Please don't show up. <laughs> Please tell me she's not gonna show up today. <laughs> and then I seen her walk in front of me. I was like, ah, she's here. Okay. How, how long had you been a black belt at that at that time? Only I a even, couple months. Oh my gosh, that's a tough match for a couple months. Yeah. I had just got to my black belt the December right before that, and Santa Cruz was in April, I believe. Wow. So I was only a black belt for maybe four months. And wow, that, that's a tough match. Yeah. The, uh, the fact that you're going to get many more years at Black Belt, I think, uh, I think you're going to wrap up a world, world championship or two. Oh, um, that's a plan. But, but it's so cool to see that, like, you're, you're, like I said, you're already there and you're fighting at this level. If you could have one match, anybody, any era, who would it be? And under what rule set? Oh, I want to go against Misa. Yeah, that's a good one. I want to put myself <laughs> to the test against her. I know she is phenomenal, that's why. I've watched so many of her matches. It's everything she does, she's super technical, but she is like on point with it, no she's matter great. what. She's great. She was made for jujitsu. jitsu Yes, she was. And she doesn't even look tired half the time. <laughs> she looks like she's just, that was her warm up round right there. And then she's on to the next. I'm like, okay, I'm learning, don't worry. I saw her in Japan one time right before her match playing on her phone the other girls walking out all hyped up she's still playing on her phone someone had to tap her be like hey you're up she just stood up just walked out there yeah. like and then just completely dominates and you're like how good is she right she just doesn't even seem like she's nervous at all <laughs> it's just like one of those she's like oh it's just nothing it's another day yeah, i'm just going here another to win another, match. Win another world championship yeah. get another gold medal mm -hmm. Uh, she she's amazing. I, I really enjoy watching her. I hope you get that match. I hope so you too. You want a gi, no gi, IBJJF, sub only? What, what would you want? What would be ideal for you? I would want gi with her. Gi? I'd have to really put myself to the test with that because of how well she does in gi. I know she's like doing more no gi too, that's why, but her game in gi, that is the ultimate test right yeah. there. Yeah, she, she's amazing. Uh, are you focusing? You're gonna try to do ADCC? Or are you sticking more to the IBJJF circuit? What is what is your plan? You finally taking some super fights here? I'm hoping to. Okay. I would love to try ADCC next year. Hopefully, once I kind of recover more with the, sh the shoulder, I do still want to at least compete once or twice this year. Okay. So I'm shooting for Jiu Jitsu Con, okay. Gi and No Gi, 
and then Nogi Worlds, of course. Okay. Well, as Nogi Worlds gets closer, I'm, I'm sure I'll see you more because I'm yes. going to start ramping it up probably the second half of the year. Yeah. Like I normally do. I got to get beat up by you to help <laughs> prepare for that again. I don't know. I think you're going to crush my ego. I'm like, I don't know if I should be doing this. She keeps <laughs> kicking my butt. It used to work. It doesn't work anymore. It's going to be that back and forth. Oh. Like, I'm going to get you and then you're going to end up trying to smash me back. And I'll be like, okay, here we go. We got this. Who is your current favorite Hawaii athlete? You're mine, so who's yours? You don't have to say me out of politeness because I know it's not. I don't know. I don't really have like a favorite one on the island. Okay. I like watching everybody compete from the islands, honestly. Okay. Seeing, especially the females. I love that there's more females on island got competing more. a lot of really more. good ones coming up. Yes. Yeah. And you know, like, you hear everybody say this is a male dominant sport but the females are coming up right now and i'm here for it and when we talk about like mysa or somebody like some of those matches are more exciting than some of the male yeah. fights yeah uh, I, I would pay money to watch mysa every day she's right. phenomenal like just to see the technique on how she executes everything it's different seeing how a female does jujitsu compared to a male I've heard people say it where females are, they just have a different way of showing their art through rolling yeah. compared to how males are. Yeah. I feel like males are a little bit more scrappy. <laughs> females can definitely be scrappy together, but they just have a way of their flexibility, the way they can flow with people, and even how females my size, we're learning to use our pressure, we can control a lot of the bigger guys more now, but it's because we got smashed a bunch of times <laughs> and it was like a fight or flight. Either you get smashed or I'm going to smash you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really appreciate your time. I don't have anything else to ask you. Is there anything you want to talk about? Um, maybe stuff you want to shout out, like follow you on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, <laughs> Snapchat. I mean, you can follow me on Instagram, mana.kai as three A's and I think three I's. Um, honestly, just if you love jujitsu, keep going for it, keep pursuing it. Don't ever fight for your dreams. Honestly, like it's worth it. I never thought I'd be here where I am today without the help of everybody in this community. And it's never a bad thing to have bad days on the mats because everybody will have it. You are allowed to tap, you are allowed to lose. Those are your biggest lessons that will help you further your jiu-jitsu career or whatever else you decide to pursue. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.